Before we get into this episode, I just want to tell you guys that this episode is brought to you by Africa's premium online poker and sports betting platform, pokerbet.co.za. So make sure to subscribe down below. You can follow the link below, create an account and join in on the fun. Have a kick-ass time. Cameron Simon, ladies and gentlemen. Oh! Awesome. Far away. Yeah. So uh, we usually do the introduction by itself because it's always awkward introducing you while sitting here. So <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we do, oh, we do that separately. Oh, but okay, cool. it's so awesome to have you here. You are an absolute legend of South African MMA, Dino Bagatine. Thank you so much for being in studio. It means it's, a lot, Cammy. Coming yeah. from you especially, it means a lot. So thanks for having me on the show, finally. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah I know fine. we've been talking about it we've a while. Been, we've been talking a lot, you know, especially not only having you on, but having that character of a son of yours, Luca, on as well, you know. So we'll have him in studio very, very soon. Yeah, guys. when he sees me out there, he's gonna go, "Dad, when's it my turn?" Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, he's he's not a he's not shy at all, you know. No, he, he, he has his moments, but yeah. he knows you, so he'll be warm to you. He'll it's, come in here, he'll take over this place. Yeah, it's always <laughs> it's always awesome when he comes to the gym and he he wants to spar and he wants to wrestle yeah, and stuff like that. Uh, he lives and breathes it. He really does. It's like it's beautiful to watch, you know. Yeah, and like. I don't force him. Eh? I yes. don't force him. The only thing I force him to do is wrestle. Yeah. Which is hard on the body. You know it that. Is, so yeah. he wrestles twice a week and he flipping, like he has his days where he just doesn't want it. And I'm like, you're going. Yeah. <laughs> you're going. Where's he wrestling at? Uh, Primrose Wrestling Club. Okay. So a really good club. Uh, Yaku runs a club down there. Um, yeah. They've got a lot of SA, SA boys in the, t like in the team. So yeah. The level of training is pretty high with all the with all these SA teammates. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he like he loves it. It's, he hates the wrestling, and that's I force him to do it. But like this MMA story is all him. Eh? That's, that's awesome. all him. That's he, he speaks to D. He yeah. designs even his fight clothes. Like oh, that okay. last stuff he copied that UFC the UFC style yeah. of how he wanted it in the SA colors and that. And then obviously my fight short set to match his. That's so, sick. Dude. Yeah. That's so awesome. yeah, he does. He gets involved. He really loves the sport, and that's like for me, it's beautiful. You know, yeah. he's like from when he was two, obviously watching dad, watching UFC with me, yeah. always like being in the gym. So he's like lived it and breathed it. And I think the next step is obviously fighting. He's already yeah. starting that. But if he chooses to be a doctor one day, even better. Yes, 100%. That's, <laughs> a doctor and that, a fighter would be great. <laughs> it's, it's always, you get a variety of fighters that like some of them say, I don't want my kids to fight at all, not even touch the sports. And then you also have have parents that are or fighters that have children and then are super supportive of that and without pressuring them, obviously. Yeah, I think. obviously you want your boy to do well and you want him to win in that, but yeah, you know, like let him do his own thing. You yeah, know? like it's already hard in for me cornering him. Yeah, like that's all. Like the last fight, I took Mark. Eventually, Mark, you was I was like, because I get too emotion, emotional in the corner. It's like yes. it's a little boy fighting. You yes, know? So, of course. I'm like, <laughs> I kept quiet and I let Mark do do I, the coaching, which was cool. Awesome. Mark he was really good at it, and 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 Luca listens. Eh? He yeah. listens in the corner. Which is amazing. Like that's his fight awesome. IQ is really high. He listens. He takes instruction and he implements yeah. it, which is that's fantastic. Awesome. As like a dad and a coach, you know, yes. to see your little boy doing that's phenomenal. And is he doing any other sports other than uh, like combat sports no, or no, wrestling loves, and MMA? He loves rugby. Oh. Loves soccer. Yeah. He's running uh, cross country at school, which he made the team. He, he just Easily. didn't want to do homework, so he went, I'm going to go try it for the cross-country team. <laughs> okay. Makes the team. Yeah, that's awesome. Hey, Dad, guess what? I bunked homework class, but I made the cross-country team. So. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, he's a little sportsman. Eh? He loves sports. He's yeah, He lives and breathes it. And, you know, whatever route he plans to take, yeah. I feel me forcing him to wrestle is only going to do good later on in life. It's going to yeah. teach him to work hard. It's going to teach him discipline. It's yeah. going to teach him... The wrestling, wrestling is massive and I, I, I even recommend wrestling and gymnastics to any parents like wanting their kid just to do something. Yes. Wrestling gymnastics is that the, the amount of strength and work and the amount of fitness that you do in, in those sessions, yeah. even for a small kid starting five, six years old. Yeah, well, I mean, their, their wrestling sessions is two hours. Eh? So yeah. they get there, they warm up, they drill, they wrestle. Then, then it's like a half the last, last half an hour was conditioning where they're climbing ropes and box jumps yes. and running the stairs and awesome. uh, you know slamming balls and shooting and yeah. there's a proper system there and like yeah. I'm just happy you know like when 
the all his wrestling teammates so they were in his rugby team yeah. like, and I didn't know they were wrestling and like when they took their shirts off after the game I was like what the hell is yeah, going these on guys, like, yeah, yeah, what? check these kids bodies what's going on no, no, what, no, what did they have them on yeah. they, yeah, they're, all rest, they're all wrestling <laughs> they're part of the SA team I was like yeah. really, where's the coach oh yes Yaku met Yaku Yaku I'm bringing Luca Awesome. It was all because I saw the physiques on these boys and I was like, no, 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 no. My light is way too skinny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Time to get him in the gym. So, That's awesome. But I mean, he's been doing jiu-jitsu since like two or three years old. He's been yeah. rolling jiu-jitsu. I mean, his first jiu-jitsu comp, which was also a GFC. Yes. So I turned up with my little squad and he was a baby and I was like, no, dad, I also want to wrestle. I was like, yeah. hey, boys are going to be bigger. No, no, he doesn't, he doesn't care. And it's on my Instagram there somewhere. I'll have to scroll through and find it for you. But yeah. he, we beat the boy. Eh? He beat That's the boy awesome. with the guillotine. I mean, then they could still guillotine back. That's how yes. long ago it was. Yeah, because so how because they stopped that now. It's absolutely, yeah. it's yeah, ridiculous no, that you're not allowed to. And that's like his favorite submission. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you ask that gamma, what the tournament's yes. can, I can, we allowed like guillotines, yeah, no man. guillotines, look out. Damn it. <laughs> it's his favorite sub. But so. he must ask every time to test his luck. Maybe yeah, they yeah. Slip, slip up somewhere. <laughs> exactly. You don't That's ask, awesome. you don't get. So. That's awesome. No, and awesome. he's obviously, he's he's always there when you're fighting. And, yeah. you know, your your fight with, we actually just spoke about it off camera as well. But, um, you know, I, I can think it's pretty tough for him, like greeting you in the warm up, you going backstage and you know, your dad is going to fight in a yeah, few minutes time. The anxiety you know? for him is like real, you know, because yeah. he understands the sport. So he, yes. he knows that yeah. there's going to be a war going down. Yeah. And like, obviously yeah. he only cares about my safety, which is normal. You yes. know? So like he was crying before, before I went in the back and I looked at him and I was like, boy, I was like, hey, how good is my defense? Yeah. yeah. I was like, I fucking got this. Don't yeah. worry. You know? <laughs> yeah, so, you're like, oh, dad, you got it. You got it. You got it. And then it was like, his, his mood changed. And, awesome. But like, at the end of the fights, I was so broken. Like, I don't even like, know. Like, I saw, obviously, when I watched it again, him being in the cage and coming. Yes. I was like, so physically exhausted that I don't think I acknowledged anyone. I don't remember my, my post my post-fight interview. Yes. And I said to Marky, hey, did I say all the right things? He's like, champ, you said everything you had okay. to say. So I was <laughs> okay. like, okay, cool. But, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, like, see, I was just bummed. I didn't get to acknowledge him a little bit more, but I was, I was you know, broken, exhausted. Yeah. No, there's a there's a photo of, uh, of, of Brad lifting my hand and then him lifting my hand and then he's also got that little pose that the yes, refs do, you that. know? Like that for me melted my heart. And that's awesome. I actually got really tearful when I saw it because I was just like, it meant so much to him as well. You yeah. Know, you got to... We basically did this camp together, which is cool. You That's know? So awesome. It yeah. felt like in school holidays, his camp and dad prepping at the same time. So, you know, you got to walk the walk a little bit with me, which That's is cool. And I mean, how many dads can say they got to do a fight camp with their little boy? So, yeah, yeah trying to lead by example. Yeah. You know? Trying to lead by example. Let's let's chat a little bit about the fight, like mm -hmm. going into the fight, um, before the fight. How, how was the camp leading up to this? Because I, I think, you know, the the scheduled fight was against Conrad Siabi, mm -hmm. and then that changed quite on short notice. Yeah, I think it was so, two weeks out. Huh? Yeah, I I sort of knew. I had a feeling like after my double distance. Yeah, that I just had this feeling, and then I got the call. It was literally the day after double distance. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, he's out. And you know, had I not got through double distance, I would have probably said no because I didn't really wasn't really interested in fighting. Pity I had my beef with Conrad, and I wanted to settle that and make yeah. it right. You know, so like, so the RPT's coming in and, you know, I think I lost a little bit of momentum and like drive because I was like really training to to hurt Conrad. Yeah. Um, I wanted to go out there like as malicious as possible. And, yeah. you know, it, it probably changed and PT and I still had some unfinished business. So, you know, how many people get to go back in time and, and slap father time in the yeah. face, you know? So, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. did that and I, I, you know, I said to you earlier, I feel like that's the best PT that arrived and 100%. I feel... Me fighting Pitu was probably better than me fighting Conrad. Conrad would, yeah. couldn't even make weight. Conrad wouldn't have, yeah, he wouldn't have fought half the fight Pitu fought, I, I believe. Yeah. You know, he would have found a way out eventually. And, you know, like credit to Pitu, yeah. Yeah. Like, the, yeah. I think he was also, because that's also short notice for him as well, you know. You so. know, two, we're taking it on yeah. two weeks' notice, but I can see his training. I can see yes. his body wasn't the same. So I, yeah. I, he was fit. He did yeah. come to the fight ready, you know. So, no, all credit to him. And, you know, we gave the fans what they want, you know, like listening to Gareth commentating and stuff like, you know, two yeah. old dogs throwing down, you know. We, I think we went out on our shields, basically. Yes. And it was just phenomenal. I got to do the walk again, bro. You know, I was yeah. like, so, who was it? was uh, Ruckus Media were interviewing me before. And I don't know if he's going to, he better not release it. I told him like, hey, what, like, 
because I fucking started crying so bad. Yeah. You know? Like, because you're saying all these things about my career and, you know, like legend and this and that and my and my, my legacy for Luca and like, and I got so tearful in the interview. I was like, please cut that out. No, 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 it's going to look good. But yeah. yeah. So those are normal emotions that come up when you fight. Like, I wasn't used to them. You know? Of like, course. After two years, you know, being and being inactive, like you forget that stuff quickly. 100%. And Marky for me, morning of the fight, how you defeat champ. I'm fucking emotional today. Yeah. He's like, I'm going to tell you exactly what you told me. This is normal. Yeah, <laughs> like, of course. You're going to fight. You're supposed to be emotional. So it was a good camp. Eh? Good camp. I felt really fit. I know it didn't look like that in round three, but I think because of my outputs and that, yeah. could I have run more? Yes, I could have run more, but... I felt really good going into the fight, got through my double distance. Yes. Um, Which I think is more stressful than a fight sometimes. Yeah, that, was, that put big anxiety on me. Yeah. Eh? Like I was like, hey, you double distance, double distance. And then yes. coach canceled the first one and then I got moved. Oh, I, I like, hate hey. when double distance gets moved moved up. Yeah. I hate because yeah. I just want to get it over and done with. Because after that, it's <coughs> kind of like that top of the roller coaster. Then it's just, you know, yeah. you're in your system. But mentally but, for me, like that double distance did a lot. And and had yeah. they come to me the day before double distance and said, hey, uh, Conrad's out, Pitsy's in, I would have said. Then I'm not fine. Not keen. But okay. because I did my double distance, you like, you I was like, well, fuck it. <laughs> it didn't get all dressed for up for nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we awesome. might as well do it. So, yeah, I felt the camp was good. I, I, like I put in the work, you know, yes, I could have, could have done more. Um, yes. And I'm not a full-time fighter anymore. I, I'm like juggling a full-time job as well. Yes. Um, so I'm working and I'm juggling like father duties as well and my son that's so competitive. So it was a good camp, you know. Yes. It's uh, I, I think like the fight also showed like father time showed his hand and, you know, yes, you're getting a bit old now, but the, the dog's still there. Yeah, so. 100% without <laughs> yeah. a doubt. So I think no. like I'm done with five minute rounds now. Eh? I'm <laughs> okay. retired from five minute rounds. So if there's That's any a- organization out there yeah. that wants me to fight a two minute round, yeah. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, that, that's actually what I wanted to ask you because, um, you know, it, it, are you are you 100% done? Is that is that something that you're still open-minded about? Are you still willing to roll? Are you willing to take another camp? What's what's the mentality, yeah. especially after this fight? Hey, champ, uh, I've thought about it. You know, I've had discussions with my friends. Um, yeah. You know, the feedback from people after the fight was phenomenal. Yeah. You know, people saying to me things like, you know, you never gave up and you, you inspired me at your age at 42. You've inspired me to, to not, not give up and carry yeah. on and you know it's beautiful to hear that from people and and, and that's probably what that's why, why i did it you know i went through i had a hard year yes. um like lots happened in my personal life hard year and, and i think like the sum was a reflection of the year yes. was of, of of me fighting for everything i have to keep everything and then at the same time not giving up and like carrying on and, and i think like this fight with pity reflected that and i didn't want it to go that way obviously but yeah. i think it was a reflection of that and Am I done? Like, I don't think I can achieve anything more in the sport in South Africa. Yes, yes, obviously, I would love to get on that UFC card. But yes. I think, like, the next step is going, like, with you guys to that card and living yes. it through, like, the, the juniors. But for me, like, what have I, what have I achieved? I'm, I've, I've, like, cemented the sport. I'm a 100%. pioneer well, of the sport, yeah. Just the, the resume, the, the guys that you have fought mm. here is... It's absolutely insane. You know, for, you have fought the who's who <laughs> in multiple weight classes. Yes, yeah. And when you look back at your career, is there a fight that by far stands out out of all of the others? There's a lot of fun ones there. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of fun ones. I, I'm going to have to say, obviously, my title fights against Machil. Um, yeah. You know, I was written off by many. He beat me in the first fight with a guillotine pretty quickly. And yes. I think it was the first round. Um, so yeah, he was renowned for his wrestling and his grappling. Um, you know, I've never been known for one that grapples a lot. <laughs> yeah. But I think like that fight, like everything just fell into place. Like I rose to the cage and I came with that BMT yes. and like I just and the fight could have swung so many times. And yeah. and it just I think that's why it was such a great fight, because it swung in everyone's like went from Machiel's favor to my favor, then yeah. him, then me, and it was just a flipping war. And it was fun, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, was, I was exhausted afterwards, but obviously winning the title, uh, like I won it on my dad's birthday, which was also really cool. So wow. I'll never forget that day, the day I won it. Um, so yeah, I think definitely. But there's been like a lot of other fun ones, yeah. like the smack talk with Tyron leading up to it, the yeah. East versus South and all of that. Like, you know, that was fun, but yeah. 
But my favourite would probably have to be winning the title, you know, 100%. just like because of everything that was down on the table at the time, you know. Yeah. Just like, my little boy was also just born, so it was, okay. was flipping massive for yeah, me. Yeah, you know? so <laughs> I needed to give him something to be proud of, and like yeah. it's worked. You know that's what I mean? awesome. So, you know, definitely the Machil fight. And yeah, because it, the guys obviously you fought Machil Drekas, you fought Dallas Jacoby, you fought Francho Kabulu, you fought these Martin van Staden, Martin van Staden, yeah, Tyron Wright for Henry for deeper. Yeah, you fought a Henry. You fought you fought the really the the upper echelon of of that division and uh who would you say was the hardest hitter out of all of them um hardest hitter that i can remember obviously if yeah. a deeper put me out so and watching it that wasn't there was just a perfectly timed shot and i yeah. think my hydration wasn't spot on but yeah. like marty hit really hard yeah. marty cracked me like a hard one it was i think it was a left hook where like it knocked me off balance but yeah. i still like pretty vase so I spun yes. and I tried like a karate sweep on the floor <laughs> cool. uh, but that dropped yeah. me Tyron hit really really hard that karate style of like how they jumped in mm -hmm. um, you know but that also led to how I knocked him out we knew he was going to jump in because of his style and yeah. Peter Smith had had like had it planned we were going to step offline as he jumped in and, and like it worked perfectly I yeah. caught him with a, a short cross as he hopped in so that was beautiful but like I love this I love fighting like all of the fights for me like they they just brought out a different person every every time, win or lose, you know. Like yeah. they just brought out, and I loved it. I loved the showmanship. I loved the, the you know, the fans, the yeah. the prepping, the hard prepping for the fight, the hard sparring. The yeah, it was just live my dream, man. I yeah. live my dream, you know. Like I've spoken about this in the past when I was a kid. <clears throat> I used to have these dreams of people chanting my name. Yeah. And like I would be, I always thought I was gonna be like a musician or a rock star or something. Yeah. And then, like when this fighting thing happened and like people started chanting my name, it was like, how oh, they're chanting my dream. And I was like, okay, okay, this something was it. preparing me for this. I, I believe this is what I was supposed to do. That's amazing. You know, like, and yes, I won't go down as the greatest South African of all time, but I'm a pioneer of the sport, and yeah. I feel like, you know, my name will be remembered because of my fights and 100%. and the, the showcases I put on and Definitely. like that's all that's all for me you know as long as I go down remembered um I made yeah. it into the hall of fame which is pretty cool but yeah. yeah when it's all said and done are they still going to speak about you I can only hope definitely you know I mean? <laughs> without a doubt I will we'll make sure of that <laughs> don't worry about that but uh moving moving from from being a fighter and Almost now, you know, you said that Mark sometimes needs to help in your in your son's corner, in Luca's corner. But uh, you also have a lot of experience in coaching, and that's something that you you work with private clients with. But is that something that you would like to take further? Is that something that you could see even possibly do a career of of working with athletes? Yeah. Um, look, it is something I'd like to do. Um, Look, we all know this game doesn't really pay well. Yeah. <laughs> unless you've got an established gym like CRT yeah. and, and the other gyms around there. But, you know, it's a hard game. The yeah. the coaching game is a hard game. And like your your private clients, especially, they come and go and you're the last one to get paid because they got to pay all their shit yeah. before they pay their, yes. you know, the stuff that they actually need. The training is what they need. So I went through a phase where I was just like, I was a little bit fed up. You know, clients come, clients go. And I was like, no, I'm going to put all my effort into my little boy. Like yes. he's the one one that matters really so like all my coaching effort like i'm gonna i'm gonna focus on this little dude and put it into him because like he loves my time when i give yeah. him my time hey dad can you give me some time on the pads like he, yes. he absolutely adores it so i do have some clients in that but i would like to start coaching like i put my name forward for a couple coaching positions yes you know on the national team and like i feel my striking pedigree is good enough to be a striking coach even like a head coach you know like i've i did i served my time in zambia i got mma up and running in zambia yeah. um we did the first ever show out there yeah. you know so, it was like cool yeah it was yeah, great uh with the zambia mm. development uh, is it is it a lot like South Africa where it's quite behind uh, to the international standard? Is it even more behind than South African MMA? It's way more behind there. Okay. Like, I mean, if they've just two years ago did their first, I don't even know if they're still doing the amateur shows. I don't know what's happened with that company. But yeah. if we only did the first amateur show two years ago, yeah. you know, and I think they've only had 
two or three shows since then. The, the sport's very far behind. Yeah. Um, I mean, you see the talent coming through in the EFC now, Humphrey Mulenga, yes. um, Ken, little Ken Satula. Those are my two boys I brought back from Zambia. Yes. I was like, you know, like, you build bonds with fighters, you know yeah. how it is, your, yeah. your training partners, you build bonds. And, and when I was going to leave Zambia, I was never going to leave these two there. They were my top talents. Yes. There are a lot of talent there, but these were the two that I felt were ready to, yeah. to step up I started getting I got Humphrey onto that scuffle search yes yeah. turned him pro sooner than he should have got him on the scuffle search we're still waiting for Netflix to buy it and for all of that shit to be released but yeah. I think that'll also come at a time and that'll propel Humphrey even more yeah um, Ken's also really really good amateur I think he's just turned pro now fighting yeah, on the UFC yeah, yeah, yeah fighting he on actually the fought for versus as well yes Absolutely that's yeah, yeah amazing pedigree with very that. technical and, eh? and built like a statue <laughs> it's like these these know, kids are in shape yeah. <laughs> it's it's like yeah. those little rugby I, kids you saw in primrose you're just like yes exactly. what are they on <laughs> when, I, when i got there they had a bit of jiu-jitsu jiu -jitsu, but no wrestling yeah. like, and i'm not known for wrestling eh? so yes. i wrestled the fuck out of these guys for like six months so yeah. i was like that's where this is where the gap is and i wrestled them wrestled them like i'm no wrestler but yeah. i know the drills I'll yeah, be there so. long enough. so we wrestled and wrestled and wrestled and, and it's coming through now you know so that's awesome. brought them back to sa with me once i left zambia yeah i got them set up got them to go train with the martin timber when Amazing. they still had their gym yeah they ran into some issues there. Uh, you know, Timber, Timber ran a tight ship there, rightfully yeah. so. It's his house. Um, he looked after them. I think was the best place for them was with Timber and Demart. And yeah. I saw their their level grow. Um, they're not there anymore. They're back in Zambia. Yeah. And I'm trying to get them back here. That's to awesome. come to CRT because like they're still my boys. Yes. And I want to like still watch over them and That's have awesome. a say. I, I, I said to Humphrey, I was like, hey, you took that cold fight. I said, it's a big fight, eh, champ? No, 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 coach, I can beat him. I was like, I know you can beat him, but it's too soon. No, 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 coach, I'll beat him. I was like, okay, cool. Fuck it, smashed him. Yeah. <laughs> smashed him, yeah, obliterated was... him in the first round, eh? Yeah. Went up to him afterwards because that's the person I said I was wrong. Yes. Well done, champion. And I said to him, it's time to come back to SA now. No, that's no, awesome. coach, he does, he does. So, you know, I've spoken to a couple of people in Zambia, that my mates that are still there, and, and asked them, you know, like, let's get these boys back. You yeah. know, I've got an opportunity to come for, to CRT because of his household names, yeah? Let them come train you. They, they just need a sponsor to help them get somewhere to stay. So yeah. I've got some people looking at, for them that side. And once I get them, you know, I think like the doors will just open. That's you know, awesome. like they're training with guys that are below their level there. Yeah. And they're still putting in these performances. Yeah. You know, but that's going to change now when the, the level opponent, like level increases. Exactly, so I yeah. think if they come here to our house, they've, you know, the right structures are in place, the right doors are open for when the time comes. And, it was just an also I can keep an eye on them. <laughs> yes, hundred percent. I think that's that just a, it speaks to their uh to their mentality as well, being, you know, having very limited re resources, but still making the best of the opportunity. And that's what Humphrey did uh Thursday nights. It's yeah. it's absolutely insane. And with the the type of shift that you now make is is gonna be focusing obviously focusing on Luca and focusing on what he wants to do. Mm. And uh, is it going to be more career? Are you going to focus more just on, on your job, on your career? Yeah, look, at, uh, you know, until I get paid. Yeah. <laughs> until my purse arrives, the, the, my, my job is the one that's paying my bills. Yes. You know, thank goodness that my boss is an old sponsor of mine. <laughs> yes. And he understands, like, why are you coming out of time? I was like, fuck Ray, I made shits. I gotta, I gotta like, I gotta honor yeah. my name. You know, he's yeah. like, okay, cool. But this is this the last one. This is the last one. And then yeah. he saw us at B of like the Ben Knuckle trials on Saturday. He's like, what the fuck's going on? I'm yeah. like, oh, come on, Ray. He's like, okay, well, that's something I also want to chat about. You know, mm. going to the Ben Knuckle trials like two days after your fight. You know, that that must have uh, that must have been great for them to see. Mm. Yeah. But also, uh, is that something that you would consider competing? Hey, Cammy, you know, like. When I started fighting, there was no MMA and shit. It was yeah. street fighting and like I was fighting for my name and like yeah. for my group. Yes. <laughs> my gang. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a gangster, but I was just saying like we had a group and obviously you're young and full yeah. of testosterone and Oaks made cuck and then you fight. Yeah. So like I feel like that's how this all started was fighting Ben Uckle. Yeah. So why not now with the skill set go there and and like it appeals to me. Oh, yes. everyone's like the damage. Like, come on. You take more, you get more damage in boxing in a 12 round fight. Yeah. In a bare knuckle fight, I think it's gonna you're gonna get lights out quickly. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? You either yeah. get DOS quickly or you get a couple cuts. Yes. Bad cuts. But Which is okay. We got yeah. glue. We, yeah, we got glue. Okay. We, we got doctors <laughs> that can staple us. I mean, yeah. we were like, so like, am I scared? No. You know, yeah. like my light is petrified. But, you know, you've got all these people speaking with, oh, you know, you're fucking mad. Don't do that. And what oh, about this, your brain yeah. damage and this and that and that. And like, I know, like, I'm not nowhere near punching. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Like, yes, my memory's gone, but yeah, <laughs> it's just you have a lot to think about. Yeah. Exactly. Excuse me. I have a hell of a lot to think yeah. about all the time. But yeah, I just you know, like, if I can pioneer MMA and yes. then and then pioneer bare knuckle, yeah. you know, then that's two feathers in my cap. Yeah. I'm okay with the pioneers not being the money makers of the sport, um, but I'm making the platform for the next yeah. generation, which is cool. You know, that's so. Awesome. Couple paydays, they were speaking good money, which yes. is nice. Uh, dollars, obviously, which yes. is which is lacquer. Um, so why not? I'm at the end of my career. I still got some fights in me, which is cool. Um, yeah. I think the the prepping for it's going to be a, a lot different. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Yeah, so yeah. it's a two minute round, which I feel I can walk a two minute yeah. round. <laughs> That's also what I wanted to ask mm. you is how, because you know, bare knuckle. We see some of the bare knuckle FC footage we see so obviously the horrendous cuts you mm. always always see the bad from it but from a technical aspect how do you think your training will will change because you know with mma training and us at cit being so thorough you go through everything right through the week with bare knuckle is very specialized so mm. how do you think you would almost adjust your training i think it'll be a more boxing focused yeah. training um, obviously the road work and yes. the boxing conditioning yeah. to get the body there. Um, obviously it's in the bag. Yeah. It's going to be a big thing. Um, and then I also feel like the punching technique is going to change for, for the bare knuckle. It has um, to, right? It has to change. Yeah. I mean, you catch anything on those end two knuckles, they're broken. Yeah. So everything's got to be with the, the main big two knuckles. You're yeah. going to have to turn your hook. You're going to have to turn all your punches just so you don't break your hand. Yeah. And then also you're going to have to pick your shots. So yeah. I think you're going to have to be more um, calculated in your striking um, and more pinpoint accuracy. We, you, you know, the MMA glove or a boxing glove, you can put a patter a little bit yes. and miss and, you know, still catch him. But with bare knuckle, the room for error yes, <laughs> is a lot less yeah. and you're going to have to be pinpointing your accuracy. And like, I just feel like my striking is good enough and like my boxing, obviously I fought out of a boxing gym for many, many years. Yeah. And, you know, you don't just lose that sort of what's been ingrained in you. Um, but yeah, I just feel like, you know, I have what it takes. Um, Jeremy's doing really, really well. And he's Jeremy was amazing. an MMA fighter. Yeah. You know, Chaz, Chaz is doing well. He yeah. boxed a bit and he's done MMA. Yeah. Tommy uh, Stradom also fights yeah, for Tommy them. Yeah, Tommy Stradom. You know, so, so why can't I yeah. go out there and make a name for myself? And, oh, but you're 42. There's I like, look well, like watching the guys I age on Ben Ackle, like they all end yeah. of the end of end of the thirties, beginning of their forties. So, you know, maybe this is an opportunity for us bullies to to get a little bit of fame and some paydays <laughs> yeah. before <laughs> before it's all said and done, you know. So yeah. Yeah, I just I feel like a two minute round, like five minutes is flipping along. Yes. I mean, in training, yeah, I felt like my output in five minutes is pretty high, so I felt good about it. But can you imagine my output now for two minutes? Yes, you know what I mean. Yeah. And it's three twos or You'll five be twos. Running up those those clickers very quickly. Yeah, yeah right. exactly. And like, I'm not kicking, I'm not wrestling. Okay, there's clinching and dirty boxing, cool, but. Wrestling takes a hell of a lot out of you. Kicking when you're tired breaks you. So yeah. <laughs> it's just my hands now. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like I feel like I can adapt my my cardio now to to suit to suit the bare knuckle. Yeah. Um and I also feel like the team we have in place, yeah, you know, right from the coaching staff to the behind the behind the scenes staff, like I can get some distance out of, like now even 100%. though I'm old, you know, like yeah. I feel like the 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 team and the team we have here yeah. will manage me correctly. Hundred percent. And and you know, and not allow too much damage. And, and coach is gonna say to me, Hey don't listen, fuck. Yeah. Took too, too, too much damage. No more being like, I, mean, he'll, I know you'll tell me yeah. that. You know? No, he'll, he'll be honest if he thinks that, you know. Yeah, I think exactly. it's, uh, I think that's, sa coach is always going to be like, yeah, safety comes first. You need to, we need to address some stuff before, yeah. before you make the switch. Now, when you're not fighting, uh, when, when you want to escape, especially 
training camps can be intense. Fighting is intense. And obviously there's a lot of added pressure of having the family there watching. What do you, what do you guys do to escape? What do you, do you guys go away? Do you like the ocean? Bass fishing. Bass, oh, really? <laughs> okay. Oh, I flip and love fishing. fishing yeah. okay. So, so where's, where's, his, where's actually rope me in? Where's his uh, SA? He's like a former Springbok fisherman. Oh, bass, okay. eh? So where's like rope me in? Obviously where's sponsored me a long time. And, yeah. and he was like, Hey, you know, I owe you, I'll slow you a fishing trip. I just got back from Zambia. He contacted me out of the blue. He's like, yeah. I'll slow you that fishing trip champ. He's like, let's go. And he took me and like, he said like, Although I'm not a pro bass fisherman, he's like, you didn't fucking put that rod down. Like, yes. I cast it and I cast it and I cast it and I cast it. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, that was enough. Like, you, he says you were so persistent. And like, eventually, like, I, yes, I, I catch with him, which is cool. Yes. So, yeah, it's just, and I love it. So we go yeah. away, like, and we spend the day on the water. Well, we'll go away for like two nights. You know, yes. we go fishing and just, that, that's my, that's my wait time, man. That's so, awesome. Also got my little boy there and then he's fishing and yeah. he doesn't shut up. So sometimes <laughs> I got a time to shut up because I'm trying to fish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's like, that's me relaxing. Um, you know, in winter, I like, I also do bow, bow hunting. So awesome. I like going out into the bush and hunting a little bit, but I'm an outdoors person. I love yeah. the outdoors, fishing, hunting, that's hiking. Awesome. Like yeah. I love hiking. I love the wilderness. Actually. I, I also, I love fishing people because they, they just want, they want more people to like join their group That's you know it, yeah. and I told like one of my friends he's like yo come fish with me I'm like I'm already playing golf it's an old man sport I can't add fish like, it's, <laughs> it, uh, only one old man thing I guess. so uh, but uh, it it must be it must be amazing just to get into nature especially oh, with the bow hunting as well because yeah, that's super gonna, technical yeah very yeah. technical um Obviously, you got to start. Like, I haven't done a stalk yet, so I'd yeah. like to do a stalk one day. That's that's flipping hard, but obviously, sitting in the hide makes it a little bit easier. But you're yes. only with a bow, which I think is fair. It's not a rifle, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. although, like, I don't miss, but yeah. some people do, but yeah, I just I enjoy it, you know. Yeah. Like, I don't go there and clean out the game farm. I'm not yeah. shooting for, for trophies, I'm shooting for like my bulltong and my poiki meat. So, yes. so, I'll shoot like <laughs> two buck, and that's like enough poiki meat for like the year. And I yes. give some patties and vores to my mates and that, but like, I'm not a trophy hunter like yeah. i'm just shooting because i enjoy it and like i skin it all myself like awesome, like yeah. that's my my guy that takes me nico he said like i was like no i want to skin it. he's like no we've got the boys i was like no no no, i want to fucking do it yes. i want to learn how to do this properly he's like you can come with me hunting any, after that you can come yeah. hunting with me anytime because you just love the all the dirty stuff getting dirty yeah. sitting in the hide shutting up <laughs> so, up. Yeah. <laughs> that's a no, massive one it. the yeah. quiet hey? <laughs> so I think like, quiet. if I'm going to turn professional or something else I'll probably be fishing or hunting would be great that's <laughs> sick that's <laughs> a the, big old bass that's like, a nice thing just to be be able to like if people come to your house and you have like a fishing trophy that must be so sick just to be gloating that's and, I love like, it yeah, I'd love my own boat one day like yeah. my own bass boat like yeah. it'd be lovely my own bass boat keep dreaming boy <laughs> I don't call it dreaming. Much, I call it manifesting. Actually. How much is a bass boat? Like, oh, f- they have to be I expensive. Like I could message where's now? Probably about 300 to like half a bar. Okay, yeah, that's. I think his one's a little bit more because it's an import. But yeah. he got a really good deal, and I mean, his dad's in the states and stuff as well. So. Yeah. We got a bass. Like I haven't got that big whopper yet, so we're still hunting that big five kilo. That oh, big okay. bass, yeah. We want that like three kilo, three to five kilo. Yeah, big fat grunter would make me <laughs> <laughs> fat yeah. pig of a bass. Yeah, um, <laughs> that already make me happy. So, but yeah, now that you know, I've got all this off time coming up. I'm sure we will definitely. Yeah, I'll find some more time to fish. That's we're awesome. actually discussing get, planning a trip soon. So, yeah, when I'm not helping other people in their camps like yeah. Marky and my son then yes. I want to be out on the water fishing yeah. bass <laughs> well that's uh, and that's actually what I wanted to come back to that because you you came to CIT through Mark if I mm. understand that correctly how mm. how long because Mark has been on the show before and uh, I'm pretty sure he's a he's a fan favorite on the show as well how long have you known Mark and what what role has he played in so in- Marky and I have known each other like seven, eight years, yeah. maybe, maybe a little bit longer. Um, we were at FFM together. Yeah. And yeah, first sparring session, Mark being Mark, like he tried to take my fucking head off yeah. and I respected that. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, he was a difficult kid, very moody child. And like, so I always went out of my way, like when I checked him walking with that 
fucking frown. Like, hey, Mocky, yeah, smile. Yeah. Are you, boy? How's it, champ? This yeah. and that. I think, like, over time, I just, like, wore him down. Like, <laughs> fuck the soak again, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and he, like, we obviously kept in contact. Obviously, we've blixomed each other every weekend uh, in the gym. Obviously, in the gym every weekend. And then we kept in contact, and he, he contacted me during lockdown. Like, D, I'm going to go mad. I can't take this. Yeah. I think I'm going to sign up for um, uh, the, uh, I can't blank, the it's a French, French Foreign Legion. G- I was yeah, like, yeah. no, shit, really? Why? Yeah. This? No, he's going to do it. Followed up with him. No, 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 he's done. Oh, fuck. Okay, he's not going to do it. Why? No, you can't get out of the country because yeah. of lockdown and this and that. And he doesn't know what he's going to do. He's going to lose his flipping mind. And then he phoned me up. He's like, do I want to walk to Cape Town? Yeah. I was like, for what? No, he's going to draw closer to God. He needs to. He needs to. He's going to lose his mind. He's going to kill someone if he stays in Joburg. He's gonna, he feels like he wants to murder people. You know what? <laughs> yeah. So he's going to walk to Cato. And I was like, no shit, champ. Are you <laughs> flipping serious? You're going to walk to... That's like... That's no joke. Yeah, like, that's hey, fine. No, no. He's got a bag already. He's got <laughs> shoes already. I like it. How are you going to... Ma- no, he's got a GPS and... I literally I kept in contact with him the whole way. He put us all on a group, and yeah. when I went, he when he hadn't checked in, I was phoning people. Has anyone heard from Mark? Yeah. You know, and then when he got there, like I was like so proud of the dude. I was yeah. like telling everyone, you know, this is a fucking machine, and like who does that? Yeah, who, who has the balls at? Well, what is he then? 24, 20, 25? Yeah, well, yeah, maybe, maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit older. I think. Yeah. yeah. To David and yeah. you to walk to Cape Town on your own, Ace out on your own to walk to Cape Town. And then once you get there now, you still want to hike the 13 peaks to pray yeah. on every peak. I mean, it takes a special human being, you know. Yeah. So I was like like amazed by it. I was like, champ, you didn't document your story. you like, you got to start writing a book, like document it now while it's all yes. still fresh in your mind. Document it and you can release a book later, but at yeah. least it's all, yeah, I know, D, Wooly, Wooly, Wooly. And then contact him. He's like, hey, have you been to Russia? I was like, no, fuck, champ, never been to Russia. I'd love to go. He's like, cool, well, i got to fight there. Which he was also, it ends with his MMA career. And yes. he's like, that's why he was praying in all these peaks. Like, what's, I've dedicated my life. What's happening now? And got his answer. And he's like, did you want to go to Russia? I was like, you fucking serious? Now we're going to Russia. And <laughs> we went to Russia. We raised a little bit of sponsorship, him and I. We went to Russia and it was the probably the best three, four weeks of my life. Oh, really? Flipping yeah. out, candy. <laughs> like just to be in Russia, yes. in the smack bang, in the middle of winter. So it's snowing like yeah, so properly, it's proper Russia. Proper yeah. Russia. We're going to the gym on the first day. Like everyone's looking at us. Yeah. They know he's there because he's fighting at ACA. They all greet us in that. Yeah. It's true as fuck. It's like two or three days later, sparring. Yeah, and these fucking guys come for us, eh? Yeah, uh, they come. These Russians now want to see, <clears throat> and it's obviously they they're men. Yeah, men men want to see who men are, and like the morning, I was like, hey, fuck, Marky, this is hectic. But he's like, D, like in your last, men market serious. D. Yeah, he says they fucking human. Yeah. And they bleed. Yeah. I promise you they bleed. And I was like, okay, they bleed. <laughs> okay. We go to the sparring session, and we these guys come for us, eh? And we fought and we fought and we fought and we fought and afterwards they were all high fiving us. They still message us to this earn, day. Earn the respect of earn the Russians. Earn the respect. <laughs> earn the respect of the Russians. The South Africans earn yeah. the Russians respect. And you know, they still follow us today. They message us on That's Instagram. Awesome. Like yeah. I'm sure it's all through translator and stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like phenomenal time. And you know, I'm blessed to have Mark to like to take me on that journey with him and, and get to experience training in Russia, yeah. fighting in Russia, seeing Russia was absolutely beautiful. And obviously I came back and I went and did my own thing and, and Mark, he was pushing me. He's like, hey, D, I need you at CRT. I'm like, yes. watch it. I just need an extra body there. I yeah. just, I need your length. I need this. I need that. And come to CRT, come to CRT and came to CRT and, so it wasn't even like uncontrollably nagging you just worked. yeah just, just come like, just come just <laughs> come and like I must be honest like arriving here I felt welcome straight away mm. there was no egos there yeah. was it was a this was here to help us and like I felt a part of the team straight away yeah. I, I, I'm being dead honest there was no having to prove myself it was everyone took like my credentials and who I am because more than has known me a hell of a long time Obviously. through my career yeah, and like definitely. what I'm capable of and didn't have to prove myself. I was like, hey, your credentials are good enough. And yeah. the team made a call. We're like, we want him here. And that was it sealed. Yeah. And for me, it was a big thing because, you know, I was a little bit of a gypsy. I, I didn't have a home. Yeah. I was like just cruising from place to place. And 
like Marky bringing me and coach saying, no, 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 you're here now. Sort yeah. of like it's given me reason again. Yeah. You know? And not maybe fighting, but, you know, like helping in the gym, helping yeah. Marky prep, flip, yeah. man, helping, giving advice to Steph and whoever else yes. wants my advice. Yeah. You know, like, wait, there's, there's room for that. Yeah, definitely. I and do. now this opportunity came to fight and, you know, I'm blessed I got to fight out of CRT. You know, I've trained with some amazing coaches over the years yeah. and now I get to add more Nate to that list, which is cool for me. Um, yeah, we don't turn down fights. So I think when it got offered, it was like a no-brainer. It's like, yeah, sure, you're fighting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't yeah. turn it down. Yeah. And, you know, more has been putting pressure on me for a while. Like, yeah. Every time I bump into me at the shop, it's like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Just fucking fight, man. Ah, oh, coach. <laughs> so I'm glad I got to do it and then I got to fight out, fight out of Team CRT and, and represent them. And yeah, you know, what next now? Who knows? You know, if this bare knuckle contract comes, then cool. Um, if not, you know, I'm just going to focus on work. Yeah. My son and helping the guys here in the gym. Yeah. You know, that's like, awesome. I think I've achieved everything I need to achieve. You know, chasing a bare knuckle title will be great yes. or a couple big paydays would be great you know more just my swan song to end off my career yeah. um maybe get some international exposure would be really cool um yeah maybe even get a commentating yeah. job oh, EF awesome. efc don't want me to commentate i don't know it's because my tattoos or whatever <laughs> maybe i'm just not well spoken <laughs> enough but maybe no, ben yeah. Ackle will give me a, a, a yeah. commentating <laughs> job you know what I mean? but yeah i think i speak like a lot of South African fans, I think, and CIT is the same. Like when you walk into that room, I think your your resume, how you how you act before and after fights, and the absolute show that you put up just speaks volume of the person you are, the dad that you are, the athlete that you are. And I think uh, anyone will be welcome if it's BKFC, if it's whatever promotion there is. That's I, I think anyone would be happy to have you join them whether Thanks, you are Jeff. commentating or fighting <laughs> hopefully you're, you're still fighting yeah, hopefully you're still fun. fighting <laughs> but, uh, yeah thank you so much for joining me in studio thank you so much for sharing and uh, we can't wait because i want little luca on the podcast as well okay cool now so, when he sees us he's gonna go where am i where am i next <laughs> am I next? So, so we'll have him in studio very no, soon thanks, and uh, thank you so much for what you have done not only for south african yeah. mma but for for combat sports as a whole because you've played a a pivotal a pivotal role oh, in, thanks, in South Champ. African and, you know I'm, I, I have to give you some credit as well um, I think what your show is doing for the sport is phenomenal um, and you got so much on your plate as it is and, and to be running a f podcast and a promotion and all of the stuff you're doing for for amateur MMA and the sports of MMA is phenomenal so you. you know well done and, and we thank you Champ. thanks man. enjoy right. thanks, <laughs> thanks. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. Make sure to go like and subscribe. Go follow Dino on his socials as well. It will be in the description below. Enjoy. Cheers.